Hi, it's Steven here for Bland Designs, and I'm going to do this month's uh, Mission Inspiration by Mike Deacon. And he's doing something a little different this year with the start of the new year. He's uh, only giving us eight prompts, but he's putting on his uh, sheet, this is a printout of his instructions, he's giving us the suggested color scheme, as you can see here on the side, and some suggested words as themes for this. So, I'm just going to go through this with you and then away we'll go and I'll fast forward some of this video so you don't have to watch uh, wet paint dry. So, first thing he wants us to do is glue torn fragments of junk mail, then add strips of ribbon or trim, then cover with gesso or paint, add secret journaling, add a focal point or image, add drips or splatters, make marks with paint or ink, and add a frame or border. So that's the instructions and I'm going to do it in my round journal as I usually do for the Mission Inspiration um, challenge. And so we'll get started. I have already pre-gessoed this page. So I guess we'll work on the first one which is glue torn fragments of junk mail. So I've, uh, I've assembled my, uh, that shouldn't be in there, I've assembled my torn fragments of junk mail here. I uh, just grabbed a couple of things at random. Uh, a lot of text here, a little bit of color. I picked uh, some of these too because they had sort of that color scheme that he's talking about. And I'm going to lay them all down and glue them down with uh, Distress Collage uh, Medium. You've seen me use this before. And um, I'm really not going to think too hard about where these pieces are going to go. I'm just going to lay them down wherever. Oops, moving off the th side here. You'll notice that my uh, work area is now covered with those uh, non-stick craft sheets. And um, I, uh, I mean, Tim Holtz makes these, um, but that's not the Tim Holtz ones I'm using. I'm actually using something that I saw advertised on TV and I found it in uh, actually my local grocery store. They're called Kukina, I think, C-O-O-K-I-N-A, and they're fairly large. Uh, they're exactly the same thing as the Tim Holtz sheets, um, a little bit cheaper. I think uh, a roll for these, are, uh, and it's a big sheet, I think it's six, almost 16 inches by about 23 inches, and I've got two of them laid down here on my work surface, and uh, they're uh, $9.99 for a roll. As I said, it's about 16 inches by 23. So I bought two rolls, and lucky me, at my local grocery store where I picked them up, they were on sale the day I got them for $7.99 a piece. So I put those down on my surface uh, to keep it clean. And, uh, well, so far, I'm pretty much impressed with them. They're Like I said, they're exactly the same as the ones uh, that Tim Holtz has that are made by Ranger, and uh, seem to be working out okay. Uh, let's put a little bit up here. I'll come back later after I heat dry this and, and trim off those pieces that are going off the page. Uh, let's get some more. What else have we got here? And I think I need one over here. So make sure everything is co 
reboot it. Okay, so I'm going to go off and give this a blast with the heat gun, trim the edges around, clean out my mess, and move on to the next step. The next prompt says to add strips of ribbon or trim. So I have a selection of things here, and uh, I picked out some that's blue because that's one of his color schemes and then I've got this sort of weaved woven trim and I'm just laying it out I've got a piece of gold here too but this one I don't know if I'm going to use that this one's just a plain piece I might just stick to just this blue and the this piece of trim and I guess the best way to put these down is probably to use some more collage medium so uh, okay so that's what I'm gonna do this might give me a problem sticking kind of wants to curl up on me so I think I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of it with my scissors make it a little bit more manageable or maybe not okay let's see what happens if I can get it to lay flat this little piece down here doesn't want to stick we'll make it stick And then I think I'm gonna I want to put it across the middle. And now I'll take another piece of blue, put it across down here. I really don't have any idea. Like there isn't a plan here. It seldom is. this up after it dries. Yeah, I'm going to do that and I don't know why, but I'm going to do it. down here and I'm going to put a little piece along here Okay, I'm going to hit this with the heat dryer and then I'll be back. The next thing on our list is to cover this with gesso or with paint. And um, I don't think I want to use gesso, 
And my focal image, I'll show you my focal image, comes later, has sort of these orangey tones to it, wood grain kind of things. So, um, although mind you, I'm only going to cut out the cheerleaders. But I'm thinking one of the colors, these are the three colors that we're using today according to the prompt. So I'm going to use the yellow, but I think I'm going to water it down using my spray bottle and I'm just going to give it a wash and we'll see what happens with that. So put a glob out, that's probably more than enough. Get this mixed around. Maybe one more water. And away we go. This is just sort of evening out the colors a little bit. And I, I made it into wash because I didn't want to completely cover up the colors of the little fragments that are on here. And I guess I put out just about the right amount on uh, my craft sheet here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to dry this and then I'll be back. So the uh, next thing on the list is to add a focal point or image. And um, what I did was I found this image of cheerleaders. It's a Norman Rockwell uh, painting. I love his stuff. I bought an old book at a used bookstore of all of his stuff and I ripped the pages out. And I really like the images, but then who doesn't like Norman Rockwell, right? But I also found this in my stash, this little piece of burlap. And my original intention was to glue it down when I was putting these other pieces down, and then I forgot it was there. But what I think I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue it down sort of as a, an anchoring piece for this image. And I think I'm gonna mount the image like this. Now, the other thing too, and you probably can't see this on video, but right here, it said to add, before this stage, some secret journaling. I'm really not, uh, not sure what the whole point of secret journaling is. Um, so I wrote some stuff, it'll look like script in the background. Um, I don't care if anybody reads it or not because it's not that much of a secret. If you want to keep it a secret, don't tell somebody. So I'm gonna put these two pieces down here and I'm going to glue it down with our trusty old Distress Collage Medium. And I've got my brush here. And What I like to do, and you've seen this in other videos, I like to wrap the brush up um, if I know I'm going to use it again in a project in a damp baby wipe just keeps it uh, moist and I don't have to keep running back and forth to the sink to wash it out all the time after I've done it, used it completely I will wash it out so we're gonna get some of this down and I'm gonna put it on fairly thick because this piece of burlap is pretty thick in itself so I want to make sure it sticks and I'm gonna put some directly on it as well And it is fraying on me, but that is okay. I kind of like that look, except the little pieces are sticking to my hands. Okay, got that down. I'm getting some of it in my brush as it frays. Now I want those little frayed pieces to stay here. I'm not gonna pull them off. Well, one, it's going to start a whole, you know, thing happening here. Now we got to put down the picture. I'm going to make sure I have this lined up where I want it to be because my holes for the book are here, so the page is going to go in this way. Oops. 
little stray piece there that I don't want. Okay, I'm going to give this a hip heat gun and then I'll be back. Okay, the next thing to do is add drips or splatters. And uh, I, I've still got the two colors in the color scheme that I haven't used at all uh, in this project. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit out of these colors, of these two blues. And I'm just going to water each one down. And using my fan brush, I'm going to add the splatters. I don't think I want that many. I'll start with the darker blue. This needs to be really juicy. I've put my apron on as well because when I splatter stuff, I am very messy. I never seem to get exactly where I want it to go. Okay, I think that's drippy enough. Um, I don't want it on these girls, so I think what I'm going to do is take uh, I take some post-it notes, and I'm just going to kind of mask the girls off here. Okay, I've got that. Now let's go back to this and let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'm wearing it. Glad to put on the apron. I don't want that much. I'm going to clean some of the excess off my brush here. And we'll get this other one. Honey. Got a little bit of the other color into this, but I don't think that's going to hurt things. Doesn't really matter. I don't think it's soupy enough. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up and uh, dry it and come back. The next prompt says to make marks with paint or ink, so I'm gonna stick to the color scheme that, uh, get them here in the shot, that uh, Mike has put on this prompt. And I've got this uh, champagne cork. And I'm dipping it into the darker blue, this blue. It's a metallic blue. And uh, I'm going to tap it off on a scrap piece of paper first because I don't want too much ink. And I'm just going to stamp it randomly. off the page a little bit. Oops, put my finger in that one, but that's okay. And I think I'm going to uh, use this blue too, the lighter blue, blue blue light it's called. Okay, this is really cheap acrylic paint. Came from Michaels. It's just their artist loft quality, student grade I guess, or less. And uh, I'm not going to worry too much about maybe just go over some of the spots I've already done. Sort of a shadow effect. And a couple of kind of mixing my two colors right here together. It's kind of fun. As usual I don't know when to stop. I need one right here on the burlap. Maybe two. Maybe three. Okay, let's stop there.
that's good. Okay. Dry and clean up. So the prompt didn't say anything about adding any words to this, but it's art journaling, so we should have some words. And uh, the theme words that were given in the prompt uh, included these three, determination, hope, and resolve. Uh, I've got three girls. This could be hope. This could be determination. This could be resolve. I don't know. The three things. I just think it goes along with it very nicely. So I had printed out the prompt on my uh, printer and I've cut these words out from the prompt because I like the way they appeared. And uh, I think I'm going to um, put them right down here at the feet of these girls, a little off center, and add that to this. So I'm just going to get out my matte medium. And hopefully the ink will not run. And I stick this down. little bumpy because of the texture of the ribbon and everything, the layers, but that's okay. Okay, that's good. So we'll heat that, dry it. Now, it also says that the last prompt, the eighth prompt, is to create a border. And I am going to do that, and I'm thinking of doing that with Distress Ink, and I'm thinking of using the Mermaid uh, Laboon Blue. It's a, another shade of the blue, keeps the color scheme, and I think it, it'll be dark enough and a little different enough that it'll give a nice border. But before that, I think I'm going to use my Big Brush uh, Pit Pen markers and add a little outline, a little shadow to this, and I'm thinking I could use brown, in this purpley plummy color. I could use black, but I, I want to stay away from black. I don't want to use yellow. I've got blue on here already. I think I'm leaning towards... Now the plum action, there's skirts, the outline. I could play it safe though and just uh, just go with the brown. Well, the one thing about the uh, big brush markers is that it will wipe off. So I'm just going to try a little bit along here and just see what happens. Actually, yeah, I, I kind of like that all right. So I'll just go down here just to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, that's all I'm going to do with that. I'm going to heat set this marker and then I'm going to add my border. Okay, so the last step is to add a border. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to get out my Distress Ink and I'm using uh, Mermaid Lagoon. And I've got my ink applicator. And I'm just going to go all the way around the outside edges of my page. Just finishes it off kind of nicely. Okay, and I think I'm going to call that done. So 
there it is a little close up here and uh, I'll take several photos of it and uh, I'm finished show you my next one when I get to it bye bye